It's okay if you smoke. Hey, Joe Fay here. Uh, 110 degrees in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. It's like a friggin' oven. And what better way to spend this hot day other than with uh, Dan Smith and his checker? Hey, Dan, tell us what you have here. This is a 82 V6. Last year they built them. Was a propane, now it's a gas. This was the one that came down from Seattle from William Crawford. It's alive. Needs a paint job. This is the one that had uh, rats in it, didn't it? Yeah, this is the one that had the rats living above the headliner. That was a pleasant surprise. Wonderful. Yes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Dan's place and we're going to uh, look at all of his cars. And uh, we'll put a big film on YouTube and get 50,000 hits and uh, be all popular and make millions. All right, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> What do we got here? We're gonna do a quick count. We got one, two, three. That's Steve's wagon. No, four. that's Steve's wagon. Oh, okay. I'm all confused. Holy more. Holy one, Kayla's two, three, car. four, five. Oh, the Kayla car. Look at that. It's looking solid. Look at that. Oh. Mm. Well, I know. <laughs> There's Steve's car. Holy moly. Look at this. Oh, Medicar. Jeez. I know a guy in Missouri who likes Medicars. <laughs> parts. Do we have parts? Oh, yes. Oh, and this is a, a Lar another Lawrence Survivor. So, this is pretty much the one of the largest uh, checker Fords. Fords around <laughs> right now. Yes. Well, this is the 72, one of Pollard's old movie cars. It was Cab 205 in San Jose, California. It's all life. Okay. I just stuffed an interior in that last summer when it was about this hot in the wiring harness. I need to button it up. Now the motor has a rod knock, just yay, but I have a brand new motor for it. So good we're deal. Good there. So let's, let's stop for a second here. So here we have a 1970 Medicar. I forget, was it 103 or 107 built? Uh, 100, exactly oh, 100. 100. Okay, this one runs drives, everything works right down to the AC. The game plan for this one is to detaxify it and yeah, do yeah. it all white into a miniature ambulance with the gumball machine, the spotlight, the whole nine yards. Runs and drives pretty well, it's in pretty good shape. Just Tell, and you've got you've got the the ambulance attire. You got a body. Yeah, well, I, you know. I don't I don't know who that might be. Maybe somebody from Checker World. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's Ron. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you got all the equipment, so you're going to make it what it was actually meant to be, which was an ambulance. Yeah, it's going to be a mini ambulance when I'm done. Sounds good. All right. So where are we starting? This one? Yeah, we'll do this one. This is a 1967 A12. There's a funny history in this car. It was actually owned by nuns. Now I own it. Go figure. Yeah. Guess the nuns got too old to drive. 
uh, a car flipper got a hold of it. He wound up selling it to a couple that sent it out to California for a movie rental. Came back yellow. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, I'll show you in a second. They did the whole taxi thing and the Keep the Change logo and the whole nine yards on it. Well, uh, I guess they all both got too old to drive. Yeah, I think he's in assisted living. I don't know if the wife is still around. The woman I got it from bought it from them. Unfortunately, she got clobbered in the rear. If you see all the damage back there. I promised her, though, I'd keep it to keep the change taxi. I took part of the logo off this door. I think it's still on the other door. But yeah, Joe, if you come here for a second. I still have Stan on the dashboard. I told her I'd even leave Stan here. I guess that was the the, that was the, uh, the owner the that owner. redid the car into a cab. Got it. Runs and drives. It's a nice car. Well, they've actually done the disc brake conversion. It's got a turbo 400 and mm -hmm. a, 280, or a 327. Runs like a champ, but unfortunately, it got clobbered. It's a shame. Shame, but but not it's salvageable. Well, as you saw over there, I have another body for it and another frame. So now we just play the toss the parts game. What's this? This is the 78 A11E that I picked up in Winslow. Okay. That was in our group. That, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember The one this. that was for sale for a whole whopping 24 hours. Yeah. Th this was like 1500 or something like that. or It was cheap, wasn't it? This one was 350 bucks. Yeah, it was, it was real cheap. I remember that. I keep threatening to part it out, but I got it running. And I have all the parts to fix this one as well. And unfortunately, I admit to being a hoarder. Right. So we're going to rebuild this one as well. Good. Not That's sure what the game plan good. is, but... It's rough and tough, but it's I, an a, this is an A12B, so this is a long wheelbase car. It has buckets. Are those buckets the original? So, no, no. Somebody stuck those in. Okay. Actually, this is an A11E. A11E, so it's yeah. a super cab. Yes. Technically a super cab. Cool. Yes, so there's this jewel that needs to be rebuilt. And then this, they're all this, jewels. This I got from <laughs> Tim. This came from uh, Concord, California. Mm -hmm. This is our interesting one with the rear door locks that we were all trying to figure out. Yes, I, yeah. The story is it's a New York municipal car of some sort? Well, that's what my boss was telling me, and he's from there. It was originally white, because you can see the white poking out there. Right. And if you look, you can see where they had the doors pinned shut, and you can see the hole that's drilled in there. Yeah, yeah. Now, what I thought was incredibly interesting on this car, why would you have... Expanded steel. I don't know if you can get a picture of that off the glare of the glass. Yeah, I got it. Look at that. It's like a almost like a diamond plate. Uh, not, it's not diamond plate, but it's like a grating. And of course, this one's clobbered in the rear as well, because that's the way I seem to get them. And... Well, they're a big target. <laughs> they're, they're well, big that, was target. Done, that was done by a drunk driver. Isn't that nice? One. Now, this is Steven Disbrow. I hope I pronounced your last name right. He's my English dude. Uh, this is another Lawrence survivor. He's a member of the guy CTA. Yes, a fellow member. Another whack job. <laughs> um, I'm doing a motor and trans swap, disc brake conversion, rewire, rebuild the AC, and whatever else this car needs to get it going, and then it's going across the pond back to him. So here's another one we saved from uh, Lawrence, which is kind of nice. It's nice to see a Lawrence car, you know, being saved. There were something like 40 plus cars ultimately. I think to date about 10 to 15 have been saved. I've got two more coming from there. Yeah. I have three more with the one in Ohio. So right. I did my part. I got two. So I did my part. So everybody else who was sitting around, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. All right. Well, I know the backstory of this red one is from Bill Crawford again, right? From yes, Washington that, State. That's the Aristo Cab. Aristo Cab from Seattle which was a competitor of the car that's next to it. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of Seattle in this picture. So this one's an 81. I believe Kayla's is an 80, and the blue one's an 82. And all three of them have the 229 Chevy V6. This one runs and drives. Obviously, that one runs and drives. Kayla's tried to start without a carburetor. I have been so busy at work, I haven't had time to really do too much to it. But I have all the parts and pieces now. We have doors, we have fenders. Catherine Bassett and her husband donated all kinds of parts from her car Sherman, which there's a write-up on that in the group if you want to check that out. That's, you're talking about Kayla's car? Or yeah. You're talking about, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, the Bassett's donated uh, the doors and fenders. Oh, and, nice, nice. Which we definitely they're, need. They're long-time checker advocates, 20, 30, over 30 years in the hobby. Which we definitely need because, Joe, can you get a picture of that? 
Yeah, we <laughs> Now the fun part on this guard. I don't want to push too hard on the door because of all the damage to the pillar. Mm. But hey, our buddy Joe Pollard donated me a new old stock A pillar, so we've got that. Okay. Continuing on. So you'll have to literally cut this up and then put the new parts. Yes. Parts on. And then I have to replace all the metal around the trunk lip. Right. The right. Trunk floor is gone. What floor? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> air conditioning. The uh, trunk lid. Yeah. Which, when I got the two cars from Tim, he sent a green trunk lid with. So this so. is this is the rubber, and then the trunk itself has got to be. Yeah, this is rusted in two. I mean, you could you could if you sandblasted it, a metal worker could like work it, but you can probably. Find I'm in Arizona better. and I'm really lazy. We just grab yeah, a rustery one and go. Yeah, exactly. But this is next on the bucket list as well. Need some rocker panel repair where it's kind of bubbled up and dented. Oh, it's not too bad. You should see my eighth twelve e. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But but this was a, a big. This was one of the big last big checker fleets running on the west coast. Up in Seattle, this nice. car. And they're off here now. <laughs> All right, stop. Just got a couple cars here from another checker owner who will be go unnamed this time. Uh, and uh, these uh, will, are not part of the Dan Smith fleet, but they certainly add color to the entire parking lot. You notice I'm not sweating? <laughs> yeah, like me. Okay, Dan, what do we got here? Um, this is a 65 checker wagon. It technically belongs to my boss, but not for long. So that's a whole other story I'll get into in a later video. <laughs> it uh, needs some love. This was another Ratmobile. But uh, an Arizona possession is nine tenths of the law, so we'll see if I have a job after I keep it. <laughs> what about the white sedan? I haven't, this is new to me. I don't think I've seen this one before. This one, these two came in together. These are both from San Francisco. Okay. This one's actually pretty cool. It's got a locked up motor, but it's a three on the tree, which I love. So I'm gonna keep yeah. it. Because there's not a millennial on the planet that knows how to drive it. Right, right. So I can leave the keys in it, it won't get stolen anywhere. It looks pretty dry too. Yeah, it's a pretty, quite solid car. Yeah, look at that. Look at even the door panels are really nice. Look at that. And the proverbial headlight lamps all over the place. I have them all over my garage. Yeah, I was digging out parts to find there, you one of those. There, it has about eight different uh, headlight doors lying around, I think. Uh -huh. So, what about this one here? The uh, 72? Prime, like it's like sanded and somebody started a, started somebody and, started a project and gave up and right down to the little fake bullet hole stickers, which is really cute. Now, this car is kind of weird because it's actually an A11, but it's got the stainless trim down the side. Oh, wow. That's funny. I don't think I've ever seen an A11 with trim. This is the car with the felony floorboard. You were worried about your floorboard? Oh, that's about the same level of what issues that I have in the wagon. But that's that's fixable. Oh, it's always fixable. But yeah, it's an A11 with side trim and the aluminum window frames. Oh yeah, look at that. Not the rubber. So it's like it's an A11 taxi cab with marathon features. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I don't know if the panels were all changed once upon a time or and you know, it kills me. Somebody started, but right. is this bare metal? God, this is bare metal. Yeah. And it's like in Arizona, it doesn't really rust. <laughs> it's rusted overnight where I live. There's a reason I no longer live in Illinois. <laughs> okay, Dan, what do, we, what do we know about this one? So this one's a 1978 A12. It was one of the San Jose fleet. Okay. So that's why it was done up as a cab. So. So these San Jose cars were they like bought after they were originally purchased by Checker people, or and then put into cab service like the Clearwater taxis? No, in these these were actually still striped. They were ordered as A12s. Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, okay. this came in striped and everything else. I don't know the full history on this one, other than it was solid, and I was like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Well, San Jose, it better be. It's definitely cutting the beach, Long Beach area. Right? I started swapping panels for the doors that were and smashed and hammered, and I just haven't had time to get back out. This is one of the ones I posted a video of it running the other week, though. Okay, I remember. And another wagon. Is this yours, too? This one's mine. This was the one I was telling you about the, the scrapyard story. Okay. If you come over here to the driver's side, you can see both doors are caved in from the forklift. Yes. 
This was the car that I was at the scrapyard unloading junk AC compressors for a friend of mine. Okay. And this came off the pile and started heading towards the crusher. Needless to say, since I'm an idiot, the truck went Mach 3 across the yard. According to the owner, my trailer was on the ground twice. I slid between this car and the crusher. Even though I live in Arizona, I don't know that much Spanish. I know the few words the guy called me. Yeah. Other than that, I'm not quite sure what the whole burst was, but I know it was all profanity. But hey, that's all that counts because, you know, the car's here. So it didn't get crushed. Well, when was that? This was several years ago. I actually okay. traded this to Joe Pollard and then it came back. Okay. Now this one, unfortunately, somebody did some uh, butchering. This is a 64 that was a Continental car. Okay. And if you see the homemade motor mounts and the torch marks in the frame, yep. Not a good idea. We had the same issue on my A8, and now we're back to the original. So it it it, it can be done. Oh, I see the frame under the tree. Oh yeah. So one of my next projects will be that frame going under. Now this one we've we've talked about this car before, but we were about two thousand miles away when we talked about it. Oh, 2600 to be exact. Okay. <laughs> so this is a Lawrence car. Yes. This is a Baptist church, <laughs> which is another ironic. That one's owned by nuns. This one's from a church, and I own it. And so you the own new members that don't know me, just wait. You'll find out. Dan's a devout atheist. So, so <laughs> in any event, the bottom line is it's here. It's, it sits straight. It looks really straight and solid. It looks a lot better than it did, too, in cold New England weather. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I I'll, I'll take this over New England any day of the week. So okay. this is this is something that you've been looking for for a long, long time. I was on the hunt for about 15 years. The for folks watching the video, they only made about a hundred of these between '76 and '77, and they're actually longer and bigger than your standard Aerobus because of the sedan back. They're called Aerobus 15s, and they fit more people because you actually have a rear seat where you would have had a cargo area and a standard Aerobus, and then you have the Jump seats. The jump seats. So it's an Aerobus 15 for 15 passengers. Uh, more than the 12 passengers in a normal Aerobus. Right. Stuff. And lots of stuff. stuff. I haven't organized this mess yet. It all just kind of got dropped in here. So uh, I got some cleaning to do. But uh, yeah, all right. odds and ends. Okay. And what we got a couple, we got a body here on a gurney of some sort. That is going to be the replacement body for the 67 that's destroyed your, that was your 60 the the yellow 67 that's right here that's the that was my show car that is now parts the show car that was stolen yes and crashed in the dark of night that's a shame yes come over you, you can tell people you know just how nice this car was and then uh then it was stolen and well, that's okay put into a fence or something put into a, like a guardrail guardrail Somebody's head went through the passenger window, so I feel better. <laughs> I'm not throwing it away. I'm not throwing it away. Looks cool, though, doesn't it? Oh, it sure does. That's why I wanted to grab it.